Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my sixth update for Pan Those Eyeshadows. This is an eyeshadow centric project pan that was heavily inspired by my friend Alexi. I highly recommend that you guys go and check out her channel and check out her content related to Pan Those Eyeshadows, but honestly, just check out any of her content to be inspired for some really amazing eyeshadow looks and really just creative color pairings and like product placement as well. I definitely recommend her channel. Head on over there if you haven't yet already, but otherwise, let's just hop into my updates from all of the five shadows that I've been working on for the past month or so. So the first eyeshadow I wanna share with you guys has been in this project pan for three months now, and it comes from my ABH Norvina Volume 1 palette. The eyeshadow that I'm currently working on in this palette is the Bright Matte Yellow Shadow, which is this one right down here. It's called D1, and obviously you can tell from there, I've not yet hit pan on it. However, I do have a really decent sized dip happening in here now. There's definitely a lot of disruptance happening in the pan, and I have worn it six additional times this month, bringing my total number of uses up to 19, and I'm really happy with that number. And I did give myself like a threshold where if I used a shadow for three months straight or 15 times, well, and 15 times, then I can roll it out of this project. But I don't want to roll it out of this project yet. I'm feeling very determined to hit pan on this shadow. I even am wearing it today as like a highlight blush, I don't know, draping kind of situation on the top of my cheekbones, as well as all throughout my eye look on my lower lash line and my crease. I have so much of this product on my face right now. And actually, while I'm talking about that, I do wanna clarify that this is now what I consider my sixth use of this eyeshadow. Even though I used so much product in this look today, it is just one use in my calculations. So I have said in the past, like I've hit pan on products within you know 10 or 12 uses, but the amount of product that I use in a use, it really does vary. Sometimes it will be just popping a shadow into my inner corner, which doesn't use a lot of product whatsoever. But then other times I'll use it as a highlighter or I'll use it as a nail polish, but that all is just one single use. Yes, this is technically only one use of this shadow, but this would be something that, like the amount of product that I could use in probably 10 eyeshadow looks. Do you know what I mean? So. The number of uses really just means the number of times that I reached for it and incorporated the shadow into an eyeshadow look. I just wanna clarify that. But in any case, I am really happy with the amount of progress that I have made so far, but I am so determined to hit pan on this. That's why I did decide to wear it kind of as this draping sort of situation today because I was like, I have to be close. That being said, I don't really know how deep these pans are because I haven't hit pan on any other shadow in this palette yet. So maybe, just maybe next month, we will see a brand new pan in this palette. So here is a swatch of what D1 looks like. It is just a true matte yellow shade with a slight mustardy undertone. And the next shadow comes from my ColourPop and Kathleen Light's Dream Street palette. And this shade I've been working on for two months in this project pan now. And the shadow that I've been working on is this one right here called Mooney. I have hit pan on it actually as of this update, which I'm really excited about. As you can see, it's just a very small amount of pan, but pan nevertheless, which I'm really happy about and really proud to see another new pan in this palette. I used this 13 times this month in order to hit pan on it, totaling 29 uses through this project pan, which is just a crazy high number for me. Um, I usually am able to hit pan on my shadows within like that 15 to 20 uses kind of number. So 29 is a lot. I really enjoyed incorporating this shadow into a variety of looks, but mostly the way I love to use it was to really just blend out the edges of my eyeshadow looks, make them look much more even and much more diffused. I also wore this all over the lid as just like a very simple, like very clean kind of makeup look, very minimal makeup look. And I really enjoyed it for that kind of application as well. It was a very diverse, sort of shadow. I felt like I can use it in so many different ways and I'm definitely gonna be incorporating into upcoming looks because I just, I have been really enjoying that shadow. 
So the next three shadows I'm going to share with you guys were all rolled in last update, so please do keep that in mind. But the first one I have to share with you comes from my Juvia's Place, the Zulu palette. And the shadow that I selected from this one was shade number one, which is that matte true orange shade. It's an absolutely beautiful warm orange color that I've been really enjoying and I'm really happy that I'm using it in combination with that yellow shade from the ABH palette. I've reached for it six times this month, so not a ton of progress in terms of like visual progress has happened on it, but there definitely is a little bit of a dip happening in it, which I'm really happy about. And as you can see, I did end up actually hitting a new pan in this palette this month, which is the ninth shade right here. So I can tell you now, based on my experience with both of these shadows that I've hit pan on, it's gonna take me a while because these mattes are very firmly pressed. They're very pigmented and you really don't need a lot in any application. I have a feeling that this is gonna take me probably another three months to be able to hit pan on it. But I'm okay with that because I really do love reaching for this palette and I'm happy to see it getting so much love. And here is a swatch of the orange from the Zulu. As you can see, it pairs just perfectly with the yellow from the ABH palette. So I'm really happy to be working on these two shadows in tandem during this project pan. The next shadow that I've been working on comes from this really super grubby looking Fenty Beauty Galaxy palette. I'm so ashamed by the state of this palette, but I just can't seem to keep it looking decent by any means. But in any case, the shadow that I'm working on in this palette is this one right here called Milky Way, which is a shimmery beige shade. It has like little hints of so much shimmer. I don't know how to describe it. There's like a bluey green kind of color, but then there's also like this reddish kind of color and there's just like a white shimmer. It is so dimensional. It's a really, really pretty inner corner kind of shadow. And that's what I'm wearing today on my inner corner on top of another highlighting shade just to get very complicated. I have so much eyeshadow, so many different colors on my eyes today. <laughs> but in any case, I did reach for it today and I think that ended up being my fourth use. No, sixth use of this shadow. Wow, that's like the magic number for this update. It was the sixth time that I used this shadow. However, the first time that I reached for this shadow this month, I actually wore it as a nail polish. So I'll insert a picture of what that looked like. I really liked it. I thought it was such a beautiful nail polish color. Otherwise, I've been mostly just using it as an inner corner kind of color. I haven't really worn it all over the lid in any capacity, except I did wear it as the center of a halo eye using my Melt Smoke Sessions palette and I really did enjoy it that way. So I have been reaching for this, but it hasn't been a major priority for me this past month because I was really trying to get use out of that shade from Dream Street because they were kind of similar in terms of their functionality. They were relatively similar. So I focused on that, really tried my best to hit pan on that shadow before moving over to this one. And now I will be able to definitely make more visible progress in the coming months now that Dream Street is rolling out of this project. So here's a swatch of Milky Way. As you can see, it is just such a bold, vibrant, beige white kind of milky shade and it just really helps to brighten up my eyes and the last shadow i've been focusing on for this past month comes from the magic mini by juvia's place i am so happy i decided to add this palette to my collection earlier this year i've been really enjoying this and i really treasure this palette quite a lot the eyeshadow that i've been working on is this one right here called O oh sun which is like a very pale bubblegum pink kind of shimmer shade uh, I've only reached for it four times this month because I just don't know how to wear this kind of color. There was one time that I wore it with a yellow orange lid and then I popped this just right on the very center of my lid and then I did a green lower lash line and I really liked the way that that look came out but it wasn't really a pink centric look and I think that's why I did like it. I like it in theory, I think it's a very beautiful color but in practice I just haven't figured out that. That, that sweet spot for me personally yet. But it is an absolutely beautiful color and I'm excited to not only play with that shadow for the coming months, but also just to keep reaching for this palette. Also, a side note, as you can see, I put a couple stickers in here just for the heck of it because I purchased the Elf and Jay Kissa to the Rescue palette and it came with the sticker sheet. So I tossed a couple in here that I felt went with the theme of this palette, just, just for fun. But 
yeah, I, I need to really amp up my usage on that shadow for sure in order to start seeing some definitive progress on it. I just, I just haven't been prioritizing it and I haven't figured out a way that I love it yet. And there is a swatch of Osun right there. It is a very cool toned pink shade that has quite a strong like silver reflect to it, silver shimmer to it. So I think that's the reason why I don't know how to reach for it yet because it is very cool and it's very pink. Those are both the things that I don't tend to reach for, but it's beautiful regardless. And I'd love to hear some of your recommendations on how I can really get some serious usage out of this shadow. So seeing as we're halfway through this project pan, I wanted to talk to you guys about my pan percentage very briefly here. I personally don't tend to monitor this on a monthly basis or anything like that, but I do think it's something that I should reflect on and it's something that is important to be aware of and to just kind of keep an eye on so I know how many actual eyeshadows I have in my collection as well as how many pans I have and how well loved my collection as a whole is. So I have a total of 334 eyeshadows in my collection. I did not add my liquid shadows to that calculation, to that number. So I have 334 eyeshadows that are in a pan form. That includes all of my single shadows, all my eye eyeshadow palettes, as well as my ColourPop Super Shock shadows. But it does not include liquid shadows because those are not a type of eyeshadow that I can physically hit pan on. So that's why I did not include those in that number. However, those are eligible to be pulled into this project. I just wanted to make that clarification. I hope that is clear. And I actually have 43 pans in my collection. I have hit pan on 43 eyeshadows out of those 334. So all fours and threes, but 43 eyeshadows out of 334 eyeshadows means that I have a total pan percentage of 12.8% in my collection. So although 12.8 is not like a huge percentage number, it is a really good number that I'm very satisfied with and I'm really happy to see. And every time that I do check in and just look at what my pan percentage is, I am seeing that number increase, which I am so happy about. Even with the fact that I've brought in a couple new shadow palettes over the last few months, I made sure that I did declutter a few and I'm still consistently hitting pan on shadows in my collection, which feels really satisfying and makes me really, really happy. I am very motivated, however, to increase that number by the time that this project pan ends. And I don't have a goal number in mind, but it would be, it would be kind of nice to see it go up to something like 15% of my eyeshadows have, having pans. So maybe we'll keep that as a loose goal for the future. So now for my favorite part of these updates, I'm gonna be drawing in one new shadow to focus on from my collection. My number of eyeshadows has definitely increased since my last update. So I am at a maximum of 288 shadows in the spreadsheet because I did add the Elf and J Kissa to the Rescue palette as I kind of briefly mentioned earlier, as well as the liquid shadow. So that brings my number up by 20 eyeshadows. So yeah, let's just pull the new shadow into this project and it is going to be, oh, shadow number 27. So 27 is way at the top of my spreadsheet. Let's just take a look before I go down and grab it. It comes from the Urban Decay Electric palette. It's the shade Gonzo. Uh, I don't, off the top of my head, know exactly which shadow that is. I kind of have a feeling it's a blue shade. So let me just go grab that palette and share with you guys what that shadow looks like. So as I said, that shadow comes from my Urban Decay Electric palette and Gonzo is in fact a blue shadow. So it is this one right here, which is like a medium blue, like not a nice pale pastel blue, not a nice deep navy blue, but it's right in the middle and it's quite a vibrant blue with a ton of blue sparkle throughout it as well. However, it does function more as like a matte with a little bit of shimmer. And I'm honestly very nervous about this shadow. I'm not gonna lie. I'm super nervous because blue is the like least friendly shade for me. It is the shadow that I am the least drawn to. I always have trouble blending it out. I just don't get along with blues very well. And this is a very old palette in my collection as well. I've had this palette for many a year. So the formula is getting quite old and dry and it's not functioning quite the same as it once was. 
So I might have a little bit of troubles with this, but I mean, it is what it is. I'm gonna give it a shot. This probably, more likely than not, is gonna be a shadow that I use only 15 times for three months and then I roll it out of this project. I can't imagine myself hitting pan on it. Like, I just, I can't, I can't imagine it at all. If it were like Jilted or Urban or Freak or Fringe or, well, I did have Thrash in this project previously, but if it was any of those shadows, no problem, I would have been super excited, but I'm kind of nervous about Gonzo. I'm not feeling very inspired by it. So I'm gonna reach for it. I'm gonna get some use out of it. I'm gonna try to figure out a way to love on it and to enjoy it. Either way, I should really be reaching for this palette and getting use out of this palette because it is very old. So there is a positive to it, but I am just not looking forward to this quite honestly. So here is a swatch of Gonzo. It is just so loud. <laughs> it is so vibrant. We'll see. I'm sure there's a way I can fall in love with it or at least there will be a handful of ways that I can make it work. I think it will actually look quite good with that shimmer from the Fenty palette and it might play really well with the yellow or with the matte orange. So there are ways that I can definitely reach for it. I'm just not feeling like super excited to add it to this project but in any case that is absolutely everything for today's video if you have suggestions of any way that i can not only use that blue but also use that pink please let me don't know down in the comment section so thank you guys so much for watching and for being here i hope that you are staying safe and healthy and i'll see you in the next one bye guys